Welcome to Brainish English Stories. Mrs. Jennings, or Jennings, as the neighbors called her, was the boss at home. She didn't do much around the house, though. Her husband, Robert, wasn't seen as very strong by the neighbors. But he worked at Maidment's shop for many years without joining a group called the Union. This was seen as a big test of his strength and determination. Bob, as he was called, never really stopped being in love with his wife. Mrs. Jennings did whatever she wanted at home, coming and going as she pleased. Sometimes she cooked dinner, sometimes she didn't. This went on for ten years without any children. Bob didn't complain, even when he had to cook for himself or sew his own buttons. Then suddenly, they had children. In just three years, they had three kids. Bob had to take care of them, washing and feeding them a lot. Mrs. Jennings was a big woman, with messy hair that fell around her face. She didn't always dress neatly and didn't seem to care what others thought. People said bad things about her and a young man who rented a room in their house. He was a cabinet maker who often skipped work and spent time with Mrs. Jennings when Bob was at home with the kids. This made Bob unhappy, but he didn't want anyone's sympathy. However, People at his workplace found out and made his days difficult because of it. At home, things got worse. Bob often came back at half past five to find the children still screaming, hungry, and dirty. He had to feed them, wash them, and take care of their cuts and bruises from being neglected all day. Then, he had to make dinner and tea for himself. Bob's sister sometimes came by and complained about Mrs. Jennings. But Bob defended her, saying that she didn't like work, but she was a good person who just didn't think much about things. His sister thought he was silly and left. Bob wasn't very smart, but he could manage his daily tasks. However, with all the sadness at home, his mind wasn't as sharp. He didn't understand jokes at work as quickly as before, and his boss got mad at him. Mrs. Jennings stopped pretending to take care of the house. Sometimes, she would sit around, not quite sober, while Bob took care of the kids. She would only speak to insult him and complain about their home. Once, she even hit him out of frustration. But Bob calmly warned her not to do it again, surprising her with his firmness. After that, she never hit him again. Bob Jennings didn't have any friend except for his sister and his noisy children. Then, one day, his wife disappeared with another man, taking some of their things. When Bob came back home, he noticed that the clock was missing. Mummy took the clock, said Millie, the oldest child, watching Bob closely. She took the clock and left. And she took the flowers too. Bob lit a lamp and looked around the house. Some things were missing, and his wife's clothes were gone. The lodger wasn't there either, and his room was empty except for a clean spot where his box used to be. Feeling confused, Bob went back to the front door and looked around. Some nosy neighbors watched him from their houses. He went back inside, still unsure of what had happened. I don't know, he said, rubbing his ear. He felt thirsty and looked around the room. Then he saw Millie and told her to wash her face. Bob put the children to bed early and went out. The next morning, 
When his sister came over, Bob still hadn't returned. He wasn't seen at work all day. When he finally came back home in the evening, he looked tired and dirty. He started getting things ready to wash the children, but his sister told him that she had already taken care of them. Bob seemed unsure and troubled. I haven't found her yet, Jin, he said. I hoped she would be back by now. She was always a bit playful, but very kind-hearted. His sister wanted to scold him for not listening to her warnings, but Bob seemed so broken and sad that she decided not to. Instead, she comforted him and convinced him to get some rest and go back to work the next day. Bob did as his sister suggested, but things weren't easy for him at work. Some of his co-workers teased him about his wife leaving, which upset him. The nicer co-workers didn't join in, but the mean ones kept at it. During lunchtime, one of them said something especially hurtful, and Bob reacted by knocking him down. The other workers shouted and said the rude co-worker deserved what he got. Bob walked away, feeling upset and embarrassed. When he got home, he paced back and forth and looked out the window a lot. In the evening, his sister visited again, and Bob seemed a bit happier. I'm going to meet her, Jin, at seven, Bob said confidently. I know where she'll be waiting. He went upstairs and came back down wearing his best black coat and an old tall hat. I haven't worn this hat in years, he said. But she used to like it. I'll shave before I go, he added, touching his chin. Bob didn't listen to his sister's advice to stay home, so she followed him from a distance. After he shaved, he walked to the main road where couples strolled. He stopped at a church, pacing back and forth, hoping to see his wife. His sister watched him for a while, then went home. Two hours later, she returned with her husband. Bob was still there. Hey, Bob, said his brother-in-law, come home and go to bed. You'll feel better in the morning. She hasn't shown up, Bob complained. But she'll come tomorrow. She sometimes liked to play tricks, but she was kind-hearted. But she didn't come the next evening, or the next, or the one after that. Bob remained hopeful, saying, something must have stopped her tonight, but she'll come tomorrow. I'll wear a blue tie like she used to like. I won't miss her tomorrow. I'll come a bit earlier. So it continued. His black coat got worn out, and some rude boys kept knocking his hat over his eyes. He cried over the hat, but tried to fix it. Would she come? Night after night, he wondered. But maybe tomorrow.